Good afternoon, everyone. We're just going to take a minute or two as people are still continuing to join the webinar, and then we'll get started. Thanks so much for joining us today. Okay, I think we can go ahead and get started. Thank you again for joining us this afternoon. My name is Sarah Murphy Appamonti. I'm the Senior Manager of Membership and Special Projects here at Business to Arts, and I'm joined today by Bronna Whitaker of Arts and Business Northern Ireland and my colleague Mela, who is our Membership and Project Manager. Uh, just to uh, a quick note of housekeeping, if we can go to the first slide, Mela. Perfect. So just so everyone knows, the webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the Business to Arts YouTube channel later today. You'll also be receiving a follow-up email with the link so that you can play back this recording or pass it along to any colleagues who might not be able to join us this afternoon. In addition, webinar number one, which is a more general overview, which was held on Wednesday of this past week, is also now available on our YouTube channel and we'll include that link in the email as well. So again, this is a webinar format. Attendees will not be shown, but you will see us as panelists. Questions are welcome. You can pop those into uh, either the Q&A section or the chat section at the bottom of your screen, and we will do a session at the end of the webinar. So feel free to throw things in as they come up in your brain, and we'll be uh, going back to both those uh, threads at the end of the webinar. And again, uh, we'll just give a quick overview of the Begin Together Arts Fund and our two organizations. That was covered in much more detail in webinar one, so please go back if you have any questions on that. And then today we'll be specifically focused on grant writing tips, audience evaluation and budget, and again, the Q&A section. So for those who are unfamiliar about Business to Arts, our mission is to develop quality cultural experiences and world-class collaborations between arts and business affiliates in Ireland. So at the, and that is an all island uh, uh, mandate that we have. So we're really working with a corporate network of uh, just about a hundred clients and members who are again, a national network, different sizes, different sectors, government, public, private, and uh, we work with them in several different ways. It could be uh, art commissioning, art collection management, uh, event and festival uh, sponsorship, really crafting philanthropic and cultural strategies for them internally to uh, accomplish some of those CSR and ESG goals 
roles. And then we also do uh, specialty programming as comes up. In addition to our corporate network, we have an affiliate network of arts organizations and individual practitioners. We have about 200 of those. And they come from, again, all over the place, solo practitioners, cultural institutions, higher education, uh, really runs the gamut. And if you'd like to learn more about our members or our affiliates, those are listed on our website, businesstoarts.ie. And I'll turn it over to uh, Brona to give us an introduction to ABNI. Thank you so much, Sarah and Mella, for inviting me to join you in the webinar this afternoon. Uh, it's been such a pleasure to be involved in a small way with Begin Together Arts Fund, and we've been delighted to see how many of our member organisations and the organisations based in the North that have been recipients of the fund, uh, organisations like um, the Big Carnival uh, and the Young and Art Festival, who've done amazing projects. Uh, so again, thanks for allowing us to, to take part. We are also a membership organization, and I suppose we like to think of ourselves as a sister organization of business to arts. We, co we cover um, very similar areas, and certainly we've learned from business to arts over the years and been inspired by their work. We are a membership organization that covers arts and business members. Um, and like business starts, we've got large institutions down to organizations or through to organizations with no full time members of staff. Um, I'm lucky as head of arts to work with our 122 arts members, uh, but work really closely with the business team and really connecting the arts members and the business members together. I also head up our governance programs where we place people from within our business membership onto the boards of arts organizations through our board mashing programs. Um, we've been, as an organization, there's been an arts and business NI for over 30 years, and we've been an independent Northern Irish charity since 2011. I was telling Mella and Sarah that today is my 15th anniversary with Arts and Business. Uh, so feel very privileged to have worked with some amazing people down through those years. Um, we have over 75 business members and we definitely see those business members starting to feel a little bit more confident as they're coming out of COVID. And we're working with them from projects around um, engaging their staff and empowering their staff as they work in a more hybrid environment. And then uh, working a lot with the retail sector, looking at how they encourage shoppers to feel confident and comfortable once again in retail spaces. So I think it's an exciting time for our sector. Um, I'm delighted that we've got funds like this where we can give people an opportunity to secure a little bit more income to bring those projects to the public with as much quality as they possibly can. Perfect. Thanks very much, Bruna. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick overview of the Bank of Ireland Arts Fund now and the timeline. So a quick overview of the fund is that this is it in its third year and the fund will distribute a total of 1 million euros between 2020, 2021 and 2022. So the grants this year will be awarded from 5,000 to 15,000 euros, and an average grant will be 10,000 euros, whereas previously it was uh, 3,000 to 10,000 euros. So the grant amount has increased quite a bit this year. And the fund is designed to support artists and art projects across the island of Ireland, and that includes the Republic and Northern Ireland. It is open to all arts forms whose projects benefit a wide range of audiences. And it is open to art projects specifically, which enhance the well-being of the communities and audiences involved. And that really is the key criteria for this arts fund is to support the well-being of communities and audiences involved. So the aims is to support artists or group of artists in collaboration with a partner organization. And we went into a little bit more detail about what a partner organization constitutes in the first webinar. So if you have any questions around that, I'd encourage you to review the first webinar to develop new or existing artworks and arts projects, again, that enhance the well-being of their communities. So if you have a plan or a project that hasn't yet been realized, you are eligible to apply for the fund. And if you want to expand an existing artwork or project, you are also eligible to apply for the fund. So just to give you a brief idea of the timeline at the moment, on the 5th of May at 9 a.m., the application window opened uh, for applications to the third round and our application uh, portal is entirely online. 
and more information about how to apply and where to apply can be found either in the first webinar on Wednesday or at our website at business2arts.ie. So you have all the way up until 5 p.m. on the 23rd of June to apply for the third round. Um, and I would highly recommend that you start your, um, your application as soon as possible so that you can then work on it slowly because you can save the application and then return to it at a later date. So throughout the summer months is the, um, the review process and towards the end of August is when we would expect to be notifying all successful and unsuccessful projects. Uh, September is when we would get the paperwork done and in October is hopefully when the projects would kick off and projects for this third round are hope to be um, kind of in progress between October of this year and December of next year. So there's a very large window. So now I'm going to pop back to Brona, who is going to give us some tips on grant writing. Uh, I'm very privileged that I was involved in judging for the second round and the breadth of projects there. No, I was involved in judging for the projects in the north, just to clarify. Um, and that includes Donegal. So we're going Ulster rather than just constitutional Northern Ireland. Um, but I was really delighted to see the breadth of organisations and types of projects that were coming in. My background um, started out in theatre and fundraising has always been a key part of my role, both previous arts and business and within arts and business. Um, those who know me will know that I always say fundraising is not about what you need. It's about meeting a need. And I think in the case of this, project um, support, as with all others, go straight to the guidelines and have a look at the other projects that have been supported by the fund um, over the last two years. Because although there are subtle changes um, to the kinds of projects that are being supported, we can still see the spirit of the types of projects that the fund is there to support uh, and, and the ethos of the work that people have tried to, to bring through the programme. Always go to the application and have a think of what's required from you within the app, within the questions. So rather than you trying to fit the application, the, the information you want to fit into the form, think of the information that's being asked of you. And I know that it sounds like I'm saying the same thing in a different way, <laughs> but it's incredibly important to try and understand why the questions are being asked in that way and the kind of information we're hoping to see from you. Really through this fund, we and Business Arts and Bank of Ireland are just trying to support some amazing projects. And the best that any of you can do is really let those shine so that they can be supported and give them the best opportunity to sing around the other applications that are there. Be mindful of the word count. Um, while it's not always about being succinct, it's important to make sure that you fit the word count that's being asked and don't end up chopping out any of the important information you want included about your, about your project. It's important to be clear and concise. And I think within each of the art forms that we all work in, there's language that is important and clear for us, but not necessarily as clear to those who aren't working in the same fields as we are. So the more clear you can be. My little tip in that area is, if you said it to your mummy, what would she say? So read it out to your mum and she thinks, and it still works for me as a 45 year old woman. Um, so I, I think it's really important to think about the audience that's reading your form. There'll be those of us here from within the cultural sector and those who aren't. And it's important for that to be universal. And the kind of language that you use will be incredibly important within that. Um, I think it's important, as it says here, to forget about the money. So it's not necessarily just about the money, but it's always about the impact that the money that you are going to secure is going to make. So what is that project going to achieve? And when we think about that notion of the well-being of, communi of communities and the audiences, how can you um, communicate that notion of well-being um, away from the amount of money and the bit of money that you're trying to secure for the project? We always say within fundraising that people give to people. So you're telling a story and you're bringing the story to life of your project. But I think having reflected back on the projects I saw last year, it's important to bring the partnership to life as well and to think about those partners that are working together within the application. And we'll talk about audiences just in a little second, but bring that human spirit. I, I think those of us who are funded by statutory funders maybe fall into a trap where we 
bring our applications to the table in a slightly different way. And this isn't that kind of application. This is about inspiring those to give, those people who are reading the applications to give to you. I think if you have figures and statistics that you can bring to the projects, it's really important to supply those. <clears throat> and certainly they were incredibly useful in, um, in deciding on projects last year. So maybe where, there, where you're talking about engaging young people or engaging the elderly or thinking about the audiences, what are those statistics that have informed your desire to start a project? Or what's the research you've used to know that your project will be important? Um, as I said, start before you put pen to paper or finger to keyboard um, for this entirely online um, system. Have a look at the application criteria. And there are some beautiful case studies. I see a question in the chat there about the projects that have been funded before. There's some great case studies of the other projects and both available through webinar one um, and through you'll see bits of press on them over the last two years. And again, although the criteria has slightly changed, you'll see a real sense of what those projects were. So start with the criteria, check that you're the right kind of organization and check that you've got the right eligibility criteria, because we don't want anybody to unfortunately lose any time on something that's not going to be right for them. Um, if you're lucky enough to have another person in your team and you're an organization with more than one member of staff, have someone else read the application and make sure, as we said, that there's no jargon or maybe a board member. Um, have a think about the kind of abbreviations we use, whether that be a funder or a community-based organization that we use and expand those out so we can help people understand the kind of language we are using to bring our projects to life. Um, make sure the project and uh, the application has been spell checked and grammar checked. Uh, this week I got um, sent a thank you card for a baby um, that was born in October 2021 that said thank you for the baby born in for the present for the baby born in October 2022. And the mum said I looked at that 15 times <laughs> before. I think just that thing of having someone else have a look at the information and give it the once over. Sometimes we can't see the wood for the trees when we're incredibly close to something. Um, this is something that came up quite a few times actually in round two, uh, and there'll be a discussion about a budget in just a few minutes, but just double check all the calculations are accurate. Because if we've been working on an Excel spreadsheet and we're transposing into this online grant making system, just make sure that your, your, your numbers add up. Um, certainly there are always people looking uh, at these applications who will go to the budget first, and we'll start with that. And it's just not to get tripped up by those numbers because oftentimes it's just, a, as I say, a transposing error rather than something that we've done wrong. You don't want to trip up what's a fabulous project through those, through those kind of number errors. As Mel has said, don't submit the application at the last minute. Who knows what technical things will happen as we approach the closing date. And it's really important to give yourself a bit of space so that you can get that application up there. And also it means you can get in touch to say, just to double check that things are okay. But if it's in, within the last 24 hours, um, Mel and Sarah are gonna be fielding quite a lot of applications given that there's already quite a few in um, and give them an opportunity to help you by not leaving it to the last minute. Um, and also, I, I think that kind of slightly frantic energy that we put into something at the last minute sometimes can crowd an application form. And if you give yourself a little bit of space and time, the chances are you'll communicate what you want to communicate. Um, those applications that were striking last year were ones where you could really see an impact of the project. And there was a real passion for the art form that was being used to engage with the communities. Previous applications were obviously around COVID recovery and coming out of COVID. And as Sarah pointed out to me earlier today, there will, there will still be an element of that in all of our work for a little bit of time. But I think really being sure that your project has that well-being of communities element right at the heart, because certainly um, it was a very popular application round last time. And where we were maybe seeing projects come to the top were those where the pro projects were, partnerships were really strong. And there was a real sense of clarity of purpose within the projects that were submitted, a real understanding of what they were trying to achieve and why the partnership had come together. So I, I suppose if I was going to sum it up in a couple of words, it would just be clarity, purpose um, and succinctness, just getting that, ensure that there's a real clarity in your work. Wonderful. Thanks, Bernard. I'll bring you over to the audience slide now. Um, the Again, the projects were really interesting and striking last year. 
were ones that understood the community that they were working in. So if we think about um, the kind of participatory arts that some of us will be engaged in, it's maybe how you ended up working with that community. Um, so I'm thinking, for example, there was an alleyways project last year called Liminally and you know, that's actually not necessarily within a traditional theatre space. It was outdoors, the kind of audience that they were working in was going to be on fit and passing by. But they really understood who they, who they wanted to engage within the project. And there was a clear sense of how they wanted to impact that audience. So the distinct, the, making the distinction between who are the project participants and maybe who will be the audience or how people will be engaged. So that there's a clarity around how people will engage with the project as well. And back to point one, why is it important that the project that you're working on happens where it happens? If we think of the traditional case for support that you would use in fundraising terms, you've got that what, how, why, where, when. If we think about those key points, why does your project happen where it happens? Are you an organization based in that community? And it's key that you work with them in the delivery of that work. Or have you chosen to work within a certain community because there's a, a group of people that you could really work very closely with? Who is the intended audience and why? Again, when we think about why any work happens, so if it's in a specific theatre space and you've gone for an audience, why did you design that work for them? If the work is participatory, how will you engage with the audience and participants and what's the impact? Um, when we look at application processes like this and we think about maybe a piece of theatre or a piece of a visual art, and sometimes it can be nebulous to think about what the impact might be, but I think understanding why you set out and thinking primarily maybe of a piece of work that happened in Young at Art last year that was funded through the programme. Um, and it was around the notion of children who hadn't necessarily been able to touch or physically engage through the pandemic and how the notion of touching each other became a really difficult thing. And they started to explore sensory experiences through pieces of art and through visual art. It was a really compelling story to think about what young people had missed out on through that pandemic period and you know coming out where we still are and really communicating why those young people and why that artist was the best person to bring those young people through that process. So really thinking about what the impact will be, not just in the moment, but maybe in the longer term. Is there a legacy to the work that you're doing? Context is really important because just thinking about working with the elderly or just thinking about working with young people why do the young people that you're working with where you're working with them why do they need or why is it important for your project to happen um, and again when we're thinking about a certain section of society how can we be specific about the impact we want to make with them and why is it that our organization is is best placed to make that impact again thinking about that specific language around audiences um, when we think even of audience personas that have been developed, if you look at Thrive, another sister organ organization of ours based in the North, having to think about who the audience is and how you've described who that audience are, it can be really good to be succinct and specific about them. So young people aged 17 to 21 based in this area who, who want to work in the creative arts. So there's a real sense of where those young people are and why they're in the context there are. And to go back to the objectives of the project, so you can clearly connect the objectives to the audience involved and bring those impacts to life. If we think about the previous slide that people give to people, it's not just the people making the application, but it's the people who will be impacted by the project. So you're getting a, they, those reading the application will get a sense of where that real benefit will be. Um, while this is a fabulous amount of money that's being given by Bank of Ireland, like everything, it is limited and you are in competition with those other projects on the table. So the ones that will be successful will be the ones that can show that clarity of purpose in the audience that they're working with. Wonderful. Thanks, Verna. Okay. So yeah, and just building on a lot of what has just been said about the impact and keeping in mind your audience, uh, you will be asked about evaluation measures for your project. And I just wanna stress, this is not meant to trip anybody up. We don't have any preconceived notions about the evaluation process, whether it's quantitative or qualitative, but we really wanna see that you've had a thought and your, your partners or your artistic practitioners have had a thought about, again, that impact 
project and the outcomes that you'd like to see come out of the project. So some of those things could be increasing audience reach, working with specific communities, developing a specific practice, uh, any other objectives that are kind of, that are you know more quantitative um, numbers through turnstiles, attendees, that type of thing. But it could also be more qualitative and having those conversations and that anecdotal information. Um, so just thinking about what would you like to see come across? What impact would you like to see? And how can you harness that information? That can be done in a, in a number of different ways. You could actually do a hard, you know, data capture with, with surveys. You could invite audience feedback. Perhaps it's a theater performance and you have a talkback session afterwards, social media feedback, um, or even just having conversations with folks, you know, if it's say a visual art uh, exhibition and just chatting up people in the room and asking them what they think of this, what they thought of that, what could, could be better, that type of thing. Uh, so we really want you to have a think about that. And Give us a, a bit of information about why you've selected the method or methods that you've chosen and why you feel it's important. What does it give back to you as far as the, the outcome and the feedback on, on your project? Uh, just, I wanna stress as we have with, you know, pretty much the entire uh, submission process. Don't do this alone. This is not a one person job. Make sure you're talking to your colleagues, your partners and deciding what those determinants of success are gonna be, what those successful outcomes are gonna be and looking at how, you, how you're going to capture that. One thing that I would absolutely stress, just like with starting the submission early and working on it while it's in progress, start building in milestones within your project plan for when you're going to get those uh, milestones of feedback, whether it's a survey or something less tangible, um, but making sure that you've got that built into your project plan and your evaluation outcomes. It's always easier to capture this in the moment than trying to go back and recreate it when we ask for, uh, as we will, your midterm and final point uh, reports for the project. And again, you know, we have this criteria of the well-being of communicate communities, and that can be somewhat nebulous and hard to assess. Uh, so we really want to see that you've thought about why you're choosing the certain methods to capture, and again, why it's important to you. It's it's not to trip you up. It's really just to make sure that things are being thoughtful and and provoking, and that there's been due diligence done in the planning process for the project. Just again, just thinking a bit more critically about your project, a little bit more strategically, and and again, as we said, please, 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 don't leave it till the last minute. We are here as a resource for you. We'll give the email address uh, later in the, in the webinar, but please, again, just reach out to us if you have any questions. And uh, I know something that garnered a lot of questions with round two was the budget part of the uh, submission process. So I'll turn it over to Mella to speak a little bit on that. Lovely, thanks so much, Sarah. Okay, so I will give you a brief overview of what we're kind of looking for in the budget. I'm conscious that a lot of the questions may be budget-based. And if you have like really specific budget questions, please feel free to email them directly to us and we're like I'm very happy to have a detailed chat about whatever your budget questions are. So the key thing is that we do expect projects to allocate at least 40% of the overall budget to artists fees. One of the primary um, kind of aims of this fund is to get money directly into the hands of artists and ensure artists are paid fairly for their work. So that is something that is very important and please take that into account when you are submitting your budget to us. Um, also key is please specify what currency you are working in and in which currency you wish to be paid. So if you have a bank account in the north of Ireland, please just specify, um, specify that essentially. Um, and do just double check your work, ensure all the columns add up, ensure that everything makes sense and numbers match where they need to, just throw somebody else's eye over it. Um, and ensure that you have appropriately allocated budget to all line items. So you've really considered what the costs of materials, transport are going to be. And I'm conscious, of course, costs of everything are currently going up. And in a lot of cases, the cost of materials can kind of fluctuate and there's a lot of unknowns, you know, coming up in the next six months or so. So possibly just consider those costs very carefully and what's realistic and what's doable for you by the time your project is happening, either late this year or next year. And 
key is also that the budget should reflect the intentions of the project. So if you have a live stream event, like take into account that you're going to need a lot of AV equipment for that. Um, if you're hoping to kind of expand the technology of your organization um, to allow like a larger reach of audiences, just take into account that that is also going to need a lot of budget around the technology and the resources and the facilities of that. Um, and also that the budget table that we're um, that is in the application is relatively flexible. So you can enter text into the table to identify kind of in-kind expenses or benefits or anything like that. And as I've said already, just think realistically and try as best you can, even though things are fluctuating to anticipate any, any costs or unforeseen costs, which might raise their head um, a little further down the line. So that is everything from us. And I'm going to turn it over to our question and answer and our chat. And we're going to go through a few of your questions. So I'm going to shop, stop sharing now. Bear with me one second. Oh, perfect. OK, I'm going to go to the Q&A first. Rona, you might like to take this one. Can the audience for your project be artists and the artistic community, i.e. technicians or writers? Uh, yeah, absolutely. If you if you've designated that you can make an impact in that community, absolutely. Especially if there's a well-being element, and there in the previous round, which was more around recovery, there was work directly with artists identified as a project development. So yeah, absolutely. And as Mela said so beautifully, it is about supporting artists and getting money to artists to. Um, I work with the beautiful Tumble Circus that Business Starts have just worked with recently on the cover for their awards, make more art to be our goal. So yeah, there's an opportunity through this to support artists. It's about, again, having that clarity of impact around what it is you're trying to achieve and understanding how the partnership can bring that impact to life. Perfect. Uh, so I'm going to briefly pop over to the chat now. Um, and we have a really uh, straightforward question of how many times can you apply if you have different projects that you would like to fund? So we covered this in some detail in the first webinar, but the short answer is if you are an artist, you can apply two times, once as an individual and the second time if you are part of a collective. If you are a partner organization, we would prefer to see only one application from you. So if you have many different projects that you would like to fund, I'd recommend that you consider the project that would have the best impact in the community and run with that one. Um, next question is, can you show examples of supported projects? And these are detailed in the first webinar if you want to watch that back and also on case studies on the website. And what's the next one? Okay. If you would like to make a short film based on a play, is that possible? Sarah, would you like to take that one? That's from the Q&A. Sure, yeah. Uh, this was uh, addressed a little bit in webinar one, but just to, uh, just to clarify and confirm, uh, we're looking for um, all sorts of different art forms. So uh, just across the gamut, film, theater, arts and crafts, uh, visual art, really um, any, anything that, uh, that is creative we're looking to see. And we're especially interested in seeing, you know, just from our standpoint, what, what are all of you doing? What are you working on and what mediums are, um, are being used out there in the field? So, so really just anything uh, that runs the gamut would, would be acceptable. Perfect, thank you. Um, a really great answer to a question here is my project is international. Is the support only for Irish artist-based Ireland projects? Yes, this uh, fund is only for projects based on the island of Ireland, so including Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. If you are linking with an international organization, then you need to demonstrate that the majority of the project and the majority of the uh, participants or stakeholders taking part in the project are based on the island of Ireland. Uh, another quick one, are nonprofits classed as partner organizations? Yes, they are. Um, can artist fees include artist facilitators? Would anybody like to take this one? 
Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and bearing in mind what Mella said in the excellent budget slide, do, I, I know when we speak to other funders, we try to look lean. Um, the beautiful thing about this fund is that while we don't want people to just put round numbers, it's best to make sure um, that you're paying people fairly. Oh, there's a really good question, Mel. I'll just mention this straight away because we're on the topic. Where would you where would you recommend finding information to ensure artist fees are fair and industry standard? If you're in the north, there are unions such as the Independent Theatre Council. Um, and uh, equity uh, in the south there are unions as well but visual artists ireland are really good if, across the island in terms of what's being paid and musicians union for but i would ask any colleague or partner organizations um that you what what represents a fair rate of pay i know that varies and there's also regional variations that we often see come up in our projects from what will happen potentially in Belfast into rural areas. So I do understand that there is a variation on that. Um, but what I would say is don't try and make it, and um, don't do the kind of race to the bottom for those. Make sure that it's there. And as Mella said, we're coming into a fairly uncertain time period. So maybe try and think about what that is. Uh, try and to some degree future proof that work up until Christmas and um, just to make sure that the project doesn't run out of steam before we even get to those bumpier parts later in the year. Lovely, thanks Bruna. Um, I have a question there in the Q&A from Flora. If your project budget overall exceeds 10k, do you want to see an overall budget with other funding? Yes, so if you have um, additional funding for your project, that absolutely is a good thing. Um, we would want to see you know, if you did not, if you were not successful in getting funding from us, could the project go ahead with the existing budget that it has or with a lesser amount? Um, we would want to see that uh, where those other sources of funding are coming from. Yes. Mela, there's been awesome. other kinds of income as well, like maybe yeah. box office or fees or as Mela said, partnership funding from other organizations, because maybe if you're working in partnership, that partner's also contributing to the financial um, aspect of the program. And the more clarity that you can bring to those budget lines, the better. Um, as I say, as always with these things, there's there's someone who flicks to the impact first, which is me, and someone who flicks to the budget first. So the more clarity you can bring in that one, the better. Fabulous. Um, okay, we have a look at the uh, one from Sarah here. If some of the artists might not want payment, say they are more established and just like the community project and being involved, but for say archival visual content, but might require, if say music, a third party might need rights payments. This is a very complicated question, Sarah. I would highly recommend that you um, email us at, at uh, Begin Together Arts Fund uh, at businessarts.ie and we can have a chat about that. That is a very complex question, I think. There's a question there at the bottom, Mella, um, about an artist-run project and the founder member asking for an artist fee for yourself. Absolutely, if it's an artist fee uh, from, from memory, and you can both correct me if I'm wrong, there's no core costs go into the application, but in terms of paying for artist fees, then absolutely um, anyone working on the project can secure artist fees. Are there any additional questions? Just give everyone a moment there. Okay, Sarah, there doesn't appear to be any additional questions. Okay, great. Thanks, Mela. And again, if people uh, after the webinar questions come to your mind after you've processed them, the information, how to look at the awards platform and all the information there, please feel free to uh, shoot us an email and one of us will get back to you. Uh, and again, uh, with really specific questions, the more information you can give us, the better. Uh, that way we can uh, steer you in the, in the right direction. 
for, so for questions, you can send those to begin together arts fund at business to arts that's to to dot IE and that uh, information is also in the chat we've also put a link to webinar number one and to the main uh, arts fund page on our website and again all those links will be included in the post webinar email that will go out this afternoon, so if there are no more questions, we will seed you back 20 minutes of your day and uh, you can have a look around. Thank you, All so right. Thank you, everyone. Lovely Thank to see you. Thanks all. Bye-bye.